So what's happened here in relation to the safeguard mechanism? I mean, this is a complex area, Graham. Uh, step it through for my viewers. Mm. Well, the, the safeguards mechanism is uh, a process through which the largest carbon dioxide emitters uh, have to uh, enter a scheme where they're told how much uh, emissions they can have each year and they need to offset uh, emissions that go above that level. Uh, the, really look at the changes that are being uh, introduced, they work on two levels. Uh, one is for industrial users like uh, cement and steel and other things and predominantly they've been looked after by the federal government who are providing incentives and subsidies for them to change the way they go about their business. And they can also pass on any increased costs to uh, consumers so uh, they can frame their business around it. On the other side, there's the uh, fossil fuel uh, producers who have really been in the sights of the Greens in particular, uh, and they will be subject mm. to much more stringent uh, controls, uh, limits on the way they can offset their emissions, and uh, really, unless they can show that they won't have any additional emissions at all, uh, they're going to have to get uh, permission, and that permission will be subject to uh, litigation by those who uh, don't agree yeah. with any decision to let them proceed. You and I know that on the face of it, the government will say these things can still happen, but the reality is they'll go to the courts. We already know Adani, which wasn't subject uh, to this sort of legislation. It was 10 years before they got mm -hmm. their approvals. Narrabri, it's 10 years now and it's not yet approved. If that's what it is before this legislation, no, no, no company, no shareholder is going to sign off on, on that sort of decade-long fight in the courts. Give us a sense. APS says today this is going to make it harder to meet climate targets. Tell us why and also natural gas. The, this is really key in net zero, isn't it? That's right. Those, those two things are bound up that uh, really gas is a transitional fuel to back up uh, wind and solar and renewables. Uh, if you make gas more expensive because you restrict supply and it's difficult to access to, uh, to do those things that are required, uh, companies will default to coal and other forms of more carbon intensive energy uh, to get by. So hobbling gas really hobbles the whole process of the transition. And, and what's been achieved here, you, you sort of hit the nail on the head, Peter, it's all about gumming up the system, slowing things down, finding a new way to get involved in the approvals process. Uh, and uh, this uh, mm. changes to the safeguards me mechanism has delivered just that. Yeah, I'll leave it there, Graham, and I will say, throw in the voice uh, given the reach of Aboriginal land ownership, native title and many other things. That will also be an added process. There's no doubt about it. If you look at the government's wording on the voice referendum, if it gets up, that's another layer. Graham Lloyd, thank you.